Brady. Huntley. David Brady. And John Chandler. Tom Brokaw. Who's America? Tonight, from coast to coast, the marches, immigrants, and their allies take to the streets. Mass rallies on what they call a day without immigrants. The goal, to show how much the nation relies on them. And the impact. What would happen if America's immigrants didn't come to work? Also... From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. We've been covering a major story unfolding all day. Organizers of a national protest called this a day without immigrants. They called on people to walk off their jobs and walk into the streets today in a massive national demonstration to call attention to a red-hot issue. There were large protests planned in upwards of 75 cities across this country. This was the scene at the height of it all in San Francisco, solid people for blocks. The day was sparked by legislation that's tied up in Congress currently and demands by immigrant groups that they be allowed to work legally and become citizens in this country. The protests worked in many cases. Stores closed as workers headed out the door and live television covered it all all day long. We have comprehensive coverage tonight from coast to coast, and we'll begin tonight by setting the scene in cities across this country, where today protesters filled the streets. NBC's Kevin Tibble starts us off in Chicago tonight. Kevin, what's the situation there at this hour? Brian, Chicago police tell us that some 400,000 people took to the streets here today. They may have come from different countries and different cultures, but today they spoke with one voice for immigration reform. I'm Lester Holt in New York, where a peaceful protest has resembled something like a parade of nations. Marchers right now making their way down Broadway under the flags of many foreign countries. A reminder of the diversity of the immigrant population here and why the issue resonates so strongly in this part of the country. I'm Ron Allen in Denver, where today the crowds exceeded expectations. The Hispanic community is about one-third of Denver's population and growing, and today showed how that community can be organized and take its concerns directly to the public. I'm Michelle Kosinski in Miami, where a candlelight vigil and music will wrap up an entire day of demonstration in South Florida under hot sun. The size of some of the crowds at these rallies surprised even the people who organized them, and a number of businesses and farms were shut down today. I'm Peter Alexander along the U.S.-Mexico border near San Diego. Demonstrators briefly shut down all lanes on the Mexican side of this, the world's busiest border crossing. Many of the 75,000 immigrants who cross here legally each day stayed home with both their work permits and their wallets. I'm Jennifer London in downtown Los Angeles, where one unofficial estimate puts today's boisterous crowd at half a million or more, including nearly 72,000 middle and high school students. And with that television tour of the situation across the country, let's go back to Lester Holt here in New York, who's heading up our coverage of what organizers have called this day without immigrants across the U.S. Lester, I presume they are also calling it a success given the crowds across the country so far. The crowds have been large, and as I said, they're still marching here in New York, Brian. These marches and protests have been going on since March, originally as a protest against a crackdown on illegal immigration. They've grown in size, they're touching more cities, and they've become more organized. But the question remains, what will the impact be of all this? Keeping up the pressure, the numbers today as big, if not bigger, than earlier marches as organizers raise the stakes. Many of the protesters heeding a call to flex their economic muscle by staying off the job and out of the stores. From Sacramento. And I took my day off and I said, you know, I got to back up my brothers. To Washington. I'm out here today like everyone else. We're not shopping, we're not buying, and we're all in, out here to, to have a very clear message. The uneven effects of the boycott fell from Main Street to Churchill Downs. From what I'd heard, that there was going to be some walkouts today, so as it turns out, I did, I did have four, four no-shows. In New Orleans, where illegal immigrants have found abundant work since Katrina, protesters were out to remind the community and the country of their value. 
In New York, protesters and supporters formed a human chain, linking the plight of illegal immigrants with a larger issue of workers' rights, something organizers hope resonates with immigrants and non-immigrants alike. I'm working, I'm a community organizer, and I'm here because we. I know that we need a change. And that's what I'm here, supporting our people, our society. But the question over whether illegal immigrants should have rights is one many American workers remain unsure of. It kind of upsets me, yeah, it does. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because there's a lot of people that want to be uh, American citizens, but they got to go through the right channels. Even supporters of greater immigrant rights are weighing whether the protest could provoke a backlash. We think that the American people are generous people and they will understand that this is one of the ways that people can express their uh, rights under the Constitution uh, to, uh, to, to express discontent with something that's happening in Congress. Snapshots of today's protests from around the country, meantime, remind us this national debate is also in many ways a local issue. I'm Ron Allen in Denver, where police estimate the crowd at more than 75,000, making this perhaps the largest political rally in the state's history. A march some two miles long ended in front of the state capitol. Many workers said they decided to take the day off. Some schools reported 70% absentee rates. The Aguirre family closed down their restaurant. Today, this means to the community that we can do it, that we have power, that we have a voice. The Hispanic community here also is trying to stop a November ballot initiative that would deny state services to people here illegally. I'm Kevin Tibbles in Chicago. What is different about this city is they call Chicago the city of neighborhoods, many of them ethnic neighborhoods. And today, they have all come together to march as one. I got family here and I have to be legal, you know. I cannot do driver's license. I got nothing. Why did you decide to march today? The American dream. And everybody loves the American people. There's still like seven to 10,000 undocumented Irish and they all need to get learned or to earn their legalization and their path to citizenship. It's not only Mexican, it's all immigrant. We need to be a part of this beautiful country. Thank you for everybody. Thank you, America. I'm Jennifer London in downtown Los Angeles. A passionate but peaceful crowd of thousands filled the streets outside City Hall. They shouted, Viva America, and we can make it happen. Immigration to this country is vital to the country's social fabric, its economy. At this hour, a second march is underway, with demonstrators parading down Wilshire Boulevard, a route that's a microcosm of the city's diversity. Organizers, including the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, who urged workers and students to stay on the job and in school today, say the second march is meant to give everyone an opportunity to participate. LA's Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa spoke to the crowd at today's second rally. We come to work. We come for a better life. We come to participate in the American dream. While supporters of amnesty and open borders are quick to note we are a nation of immigrants, these demonstrators in Colorado today remind us that not all of us came from somewhere else. And Brian, tonight it's too early to say what the economic impact of all this has been, but many businesses in the New York area that depend on immigrants for employees were closed today. Thanks for that, Lester. Lester Holt in Lower Manhattan tonight. As we've heard, one of the main motives behind today's rallies was to show business owners and American consumers how difficult life would be in this country if immigrant workers weren't around to do the work. We have a look at that very question tonight. Here with that, NBC's Don Teague. At workplaces across the nation, the financial cost of a day without immigrants hit home. For Malone Food Stores, a small grocery chain in Dallas, closing today meant $300,000 in lost sales. It's a little bit of a financial bite. But, Bud uh, Rick Gomez says it's a bite his business is willing to take. 95% of his workforce and most of his customers are Hispanic. It is vital, uh, in our opinion, to support our, the customers and the employees and their extended families. Gomez chose to shut down, but in Florida, vegetable farmer Arturo de Leon had no choice and no workers to pick crops. And without them, we can't do it. We just can't do it. Immigrants stayed away from thousands of job sites nationwide. Here in Dallas, only a handful of workers even showed up at this construction site. 
But not all immigrants agree with the protests. You number eight? Just across the street, oh, Nizar Ali eight, and eight, eight, his employees eight, eight. are on the job. We are open today for the business. Proving the point that there's a legal process for immigrating and working. Yeah, you have to work, otherwise you can get money, you know. Still, this much is certain. Millions of immigrants flex their muscle today. At ports in Southern California, 90% of the truckers needed to move cargo didn't show up. For driver Jose Munoz, mowing his lawn instead of working, those idle big rigs are a warning. It's going to be just one day, and if, if things don't change or nothing, they will probably be more days. Days that immigrant workers claim American businesses can't afford. Don Teague, NBC News, Dallas. And with us tonight for more on this, our counterpart at NBC's sister network, Telemundo. From Los Angeles tonight, Pedro Sefsek, who is the evening news anchor at Telemundo. And Pedro, I have to ask, so many groups have signed on to this series of demonstrations across the country today. One columnist said they have hijacked the real cause of these demonstrations. Do you agree with any of that? Do you see any of that? No, not really. Not really. Here we have a spontaneous movement. Here we have something that is really historic. Nothing like that has happened in decades in this country. And some people are trying to take advantage of the whole movement. But the movement is a lot bigger than them. So at this point, I will say they are clean of that bad influences. Pedro, in our last uh, NBC News Wall Street Journal poll response, Respondents were asked if this May 1st boycott would help the cause or hurt the cause. And 57% to 17%, the outcome was that it would hurt the cause. Why do you think that opinion is out there and prevalent? Well, first of all, I think they are right in terms of the regular consumer that will feel the pain today of not having the opportunity to buy something, for example, or not having the service that they are used to. But on the other hand, I would love for NBC and the Wall Street Journal to do this poll inside the House and inside the Senate. And today there are hundreds of thousands of signs that say, basically, today we march, tomorrow we vote. And I think among politicians, this is helping the cause of the immigrants. Pedro Sevsek, uh, the evening news anchor at our sister network, Spanish language network Telemundo. Pedro, thank you for appearing with us. It's always good to see you. Whoever, you know, whoever. Uh, pleasure, sir. We'll take